Hello, hockey fans. The Minnesota Hockey Connection is on the air. We're on the air for the next half hour. I'm Kenny Callagher, along with Jerry Burrell. And, uh, Jerry, we missed uh, taping last week, uh, oh. but we're back. Yeah. And there's a lot to get caught up on, just a lot going on. Hockey Day Minnesota here and gone. I heard somebody say that this was probably the best Hockey Day Minnesota to date. For what reason? Well, they were just saying... Because this is one of the, the second one I missed. The, oh, wow. You had perfect weather conditions. I guess the ice yeah. was outstanding. Yeah, it looked good. You had a college women's game, albeit non-conference. You right. were in St. Cloud. And so that was new. And it everyone, just, everyone wondered why it was non-conference, though. <laughs> it doesn't make sense. Because it was outside? Well, you brought it up. Uh, I, I, I thought the same thing. I, I'm scratching my head going, non-conference? Wait a second. They're both in the same conference. Uh, what what well uh, anyways uh what have you heard is this the uh and you missed it oh my goodness well <laughs> i missed it hockey day minnesota uh, st cloud 2018 uh, this past saturday uh, the 20th and uh you know it's pretty amazing i think they should go to a weekend hockey weekend minnesota right. i think this could turn into a weekend event you know uh, where it is next year right uh, bemidji yes they already named it right i'm away. sorry where Bermidji, Bermidji, Bermidji. Hey, yes. the Beavers. Well, yeah, that's probably the fastest they've announced. Yes, that's what I was just going to say. A turnaround after the right. uh, weekend. Well, it's fitting because Bemidji is, uh, of course, uh, the, the center of hockey country here and uh, a fairly good-sized population. I think that's great. I think It's, it's kind of funny. I was talking to a person that n knew a lot about Bemidji <clears throat> and hockey and that, and he said... That hockey didn't get going really up in Bemidji until Gary Sargent in the early 70s. Gary Sargent was a defenseman yes. for the Minnesota North Stars. He was an American Indian, a Chippewa. I think he was Chippewa. I guess I'm not mm -hmm. sure on that. But he was an American Indian from Red Lake, Minnesota. Because uh, the basketball coach there was so popular, he got all these hockey players, he got them to stay on basketball, not go to hockey. Really? Yes. Boy, that that's goes a, back to that's the That's a story 70s. I heard. That's, this was before that, I mean. Yeah, yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. Gary Sargent was a fan favorite. And I think there was that, uh, that added uh, uh, thing that he was uh, an, an American Indian and hailed from Minnesota. Right. And great he, player. He was Maybe. a great defenseman. Um, where are the other American Indians playing hockey in the NHL? Hmm? Mm. Of course, you had the uh, player uh, Pelawa. Pelawa. Oh, yeah, from, uh, he was from Bemidji. From Bemidji. Yeah, he was... Uh, <laughs> killed in a car crash? Right. Or killed... Yeah, a, he was going to go play up North Dakota. Yeah. And he, that guy was... He was going to be go all the way. Was it said. George? Yeah. George Pelawa? Yeah, or Pelawa? that's right. I can't remember how to pronounce his last yeah. name. I heard a story once that Dean Blaze, who was coach at North Dakota, heard the news that his new recruit had died... And he was driving in his car at the time. He had to pull over and kind of, uh, you know, gain his uh, composure. He was so overcome. How sad it was. I was at a wedding down here in the Twin Cities, and I knew members of the family. And they were involved in the wedding. And the brother who was in the car with them when George died was at this wedding and you know, you can just see it in his eyes, the years of, you know, like, I wish my brother was here. And That's sad. Yeah. Uh, just an outstanding yeah. uh, hockey player and never really got to uh, grow up and live a, yeah. his hockey dream. And who knows, maybe right. he uh, would have been one of the greatest uh, United States right. hockey players of all time. But before, well, we, you know, before we go any further, this is more bad news. And the Minnesota Hockey Connection wants to put out our condolences to Jim Johansson. He was assistant director of USA Hockey. Just 10 days ago, he was calling up all the USA players saying who they who made the Olympics and that. Okay. He's a Minnesota boy from Rochester, played his college hockey up at uh, Wisconsin, and um, just a great guy. Yeah. Down to earth and everything. I met him a lot of times at uh, events. And yeah. So just a great guy, and he somehow he died in his sleep, probably heart Hmm. 53 years old only. Had you Just, ever met him? Yes, many times. Really? Oh, yeah. He's always at events. Or okay. He might be at the Final Five in WCHA. He might be whatever. 
USA Juniors. And again, his his uh, his title, his uh, assistant his, executive director of USA Hockey. Oh my, okay, big shot in all right. USA Hockey. What was he doing prior to that uh, position? Was he did he coach at all or? <laughs> Um, he was, um, I think he was a general manager. Remember the Vulcans down in the Twin Cities? Sure. The USHA. Then they went, they moved to Tri City over in the uh, west side of uh, Nebraska, that team. But uh, was he a coach? I think he was a general manager. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. I'm not sure of that, but okay. that, that was back when I, I can't remember if he coached at all. But uh, the, I think they won the title when he was. Involved with that team, and you said he played college hockey at Wisconsin. Yes, and he went to the U- the Olympics too. What? Who was his coach at Wisconsin? Do you recall? Probably, probably Jeff Sauer. Okay, yeah. all right. Well, sad indeed. Uh, what? Yeah. Early fifties. Yep. And yep. Uh, now they've got to regroup and find somebody else, huh? Right. But just a uh, just a great promoter of USA hockey. I mean. Well, so. well, Jim, uh, you'll be missed, and uh, yeah, that's sad yeah. for sure. So moving on. Boy, a lot of hockey stuff going on, huh? I want to talk East Hockey with you because okay. I'm I'm I got a I got a issue with you. I guess so. All right. East was playing great hockey. East yes. was uh, out of the gates. Uh, they were storming. And uh, who did they lose to? Was it Eden, Eden Prairie? They lost to Eden Prairie, and that right. was their first loss of the season. Right. And you kind of had him. You never had him in first. You never rated him first. Uh, ranked him first rather. Nope. And then with that loss, you dropped him one. With that loss, I dropped him two. Okay, two. Well, then I even got a bigger ball. Because I think I had him at, <clears throat> I had him at two. Then I went into four. Undefeated, you couldn't put him in the first slot. No, nope, because first I, loss, <laughs> you drop him two. Because they had three ties <laughs> and teams. But I, hey, like I said before, many times before the season started, and to this date. There's four teams there that are so close. They played a five-game series. It would go five games. Yeah, I don't care who plays who. East, Edina. Whatever. Minnetonka. And St. Thomas Academy. And St. Thomas Academy. And then Holy Family's playing pretty good hockey now. They're, they're catching up. Well, what about Eden Prairie? They beat East. No, they're having a hard time, though. Oh. They're, but they, their schedule's so tough. People can't go <laughs> by that record. They're below 500. Wow. Yeah, so you can't go by that record. But they play the Edinas, the Tonkas, you know, St. Thomas Academy, they played twice already. Well, get us and caught up. they lost by one goal to St. Thomas. Get us caught up here on East then. They uh, played Brainerd Friday. Right, they won 4-1, to one, very physical game. Shots are pretty even, so okay. the teams are pretty even that game. Brainerd's an up-and-coming team now. And that was at Heritage, and then uh, Saturday... Uh, uh, during Hockey Day, Minnesota, but not part of the uh, the celebration, if you will, Rosal came to Duluth. Right. Rosal played Cloquet Friday night. They lost in overtime. They gave Cloquet a shorthanded goal in overtime. Oh, my. So it must have just took everything out of them. Yeah. But East played, played that night a very physical game. But the kid on East that's really going, whoa, heads over. <laughs> I mean, five goals by Garrett Worth. In that game, yes, yeah, four goals in the second period. The kid's amazing. He's yeah. a, you what know class what? is he? Uh, He's a senior. Senior, okay. But I, I got him in as, as my one of my ten top players for Mister Hockey. Nice, because he, him and uh, George Granis up in Marshall are the two top scorers for Class AA for goals. Did Spihar win Mister Hockey? Did he win? No, I can't. wait a minute. Yeah, okay. Well, has, there, has there been a recent yeah, East I, hockey player that has won it? No. Okay. No. I'm not sure about Spihar either. Yeah, I think he did win it. Okay. Yeah. We need a computer, Jer. we got to get caught up with the times. Yeah, this is uh, what year? <laughs> uh, we're up there. Hey, they're going to remodel this so we'll have high speed. Oh, I love it. Okay, <laughs> so the East Greyhounds will play Tuesday... At Forest Lake, what do you see happening there? Uh, they should beat them. Play their game, three goals, four goals. And then Thursday, they'll be back at Heritage here in Duluth. Uh, Prior Lake. 7 o'clock, Prior yes. Lake. Yes. What do you see there? Uh, Prior Lake is playing some good hockey right now, but East should beat them. And then Bloomington Jefferson on Saturday. Down. They've the Jaguars, not what they used to be, Jerry. No, they aren't. No. And people aren't happy down in Bloomington. But that's because... 
But they haven't been good since those good years in the early 90s. What happened? Was there a split? Well, they had some good teams like 96, 98. Was it a section thing that changed? or No, I just... <clears throat> I think some of the... First of all, the Bantam coach, Greg Treble, started coaching high school hockey at Holy Angels. And he's the one that developed a lot of those players through the Bantams. And then... Lot, half, some of the kids would come from Bloomington over to Holy Angels then. So they started losing players. And then, before you know it, uh, just the numbers for a while, and coaching, and I don't know. They were perennial, yeah. uh, not champions necessarily, but always uh, one of the top teams. But then, then they put coaches in, <clears throat> in the youth systems that weren't from Jefferson, and the Jefferson Player, old players wanted to coach in Bloomington, but well, there's a lot of things, I guess, go on in the program, but and it's kind of sad. Let's just look ahead to the end of the month, January 30th. That's a Tuesday. Uh, Anoka comes to town. Uh, Should beat them by three, four goals. So uh, East is looking good. Right. They got some tough games, though. They got uh, on the third Saturday, Elk River, and that's a big seed game. So that's Saturday afternoon. And then, Monday after that, this might be the big game of the year. Cloquet East. And they could play in the playoffs, too. I mean, Cloquet is playing some well, Okay, hockey. that's interesting. They're learning how to win. On the early schedule, they had that a to-be-determined game. No, it's Monday. So it is uh, Monday the 13th. Right. Or no, I'm, I'm sorry. What am I looking at here? Here it no, is. No, February. It is. February 5th. 5th. Okay, yeah. gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. Um, and then they got a. It'll be a tough game because the coach at Lakeville South is not a fan right now of East, so <laughs> he circled this uh, East game on his calendar. They're in a scrimmage and that, and he didn't like the way East played. <laughs> thought they were a little too physical. He thought they were taking dives during the game. <laughs> it was just funny. East doesn't dive. No. Yeah. East they were, does they not were out die. shooting them three to one. They were outscoring them. Coach <laughs> of Lakeville South, you got it wrong. The East boys will not dive on no. you. You got that wrong for sure. Minnesota Wild, uh, 47 games into the season, 25, 17, and 5, uh, good for 55 points. 10th in the Western Conference, 15th in the league, 11 points behind conference leading Las Vegas. The Vegas. Golden Knights. Jeez, my goodness. All-star Eric Stahl leads the team with 40 points, 19 goals, 21 assists. Uh, the uh, Wild had a nice win, 5-2 to two, over Tampa Bay on Saturday uh, during the uh, Hockey Day Minnesota right. uh, weekend. And Tampa Bay came in, best team in the, uh, I think they were the best team in the league at the time. Right. Um, and now they've lost a couple, but uh, Wild, a convincing win, 5-2. to two. Right. And two good things came out of that. I don't know what it is. Nate Prosser, they just picked up from St. Louis this last month. That's his best day to play hockey on Hockey Day Minnesota. He's an Elk River yeah. boy, Minnesota boy. I mean, he scored the winning goal on two Hockey Day Minnesota. Yeah. He doesn't score too many goals, by no. the way. <laughs> Nate, he's got two winners on Hockey Day yeah. in Minnesota, and he's been averaging one point for every Hockey Day Minnesota game he's played. <laughs> I think I heard all Minnesotans on the roster uh, tallied points. Yeah. Parisi got his first goal of the year, yeah. eight games in. He's only played eight games. Prosser, his goal. Rao assisted on that. That's right. They and picked then him and they brought him up. Help yeah. me out on the uh, other one. Okay, and Matt Cullen. Oh, sure. Yeah, he, and he got assist. his 700 point. There and you the go. fans gave him, I mean, a long ovation in that yeah. game. You know, this is turning out to be one of the greatest events uh, to celebrate not just youth hockey and college hockey and pro hockey, but I wonder if maybe they can turn this into a weekend event. Hmm. Should be. Get the whole town going. This big celebration in that town. Hockey Day Minnesota, St. Cloud this year. Very successful. Uh, let's talk about it. You had the uh, game between Centennial and Moorhead and went in overtime. Yeah, great game. Two top ten teams. Wow. Yeah. And uh, it went in overtime and Moorhead had a pretty goal by their top player who's going to be a Mr. Hockey candidate. And it was just a great game for outside. And like you said, the ice looked great. And yeah. You know, the sun was down. They had the lights on. I thought, the, but I could be wrong, 
But I'm looking at on at the game on TV. It looked a little dark out there. <laughs> okay. So I don't know if the l- lighting was not that great or what. But. Things opened up between the two St. Cloud teams, St. Cloud and St. Cloud Cathedral. Uh, what was the outcome there? Well, c- a Cathedral kicked butt. Really? Over the double A team. Wow. Yeah. And um, the coaches up there on the St. Cloud State teams both had a kid on each team. Okay. <laughs> and then the uh, that night, uh, 5 o'clock, uh, the men's uh, college game was played at the uh, Herb Brooks National Hockey Center, uh, St. Cloud State and Minnesota State Mankato. And Minnesota State won that game. And Hastings, the coach down in um, Mankato, boy, he's doing a great job. He's in uh, – they're in the top uh, – when they got them at right now. Minnesota State is number seven in the nation in the pairwise. And who do the UMD Bulldogs play next weekend? St. Cloud State, and they're number three in the pairwise. Uh, no, they play at Minnesota State next weekend. Oh, Tuesday. This is Tuesday. It, Okay, talk about Tuesday. this. Tuesday. That's a weird schedule. So just one game, because they played up here one game earlier. Okay, back Thanksgiving. November 25th. Okay, yeah. so one game, Minnesota State. Tuesday, January twenty third. Yep. And uh, then in the weekend, St. Cloud. State. And then they're back at Amsoil to take on St. Cloud State. So wow. they're playing number seven and number three in the country. And if they do good, their rankings are going up. Over the weekend, the UMD Bulldogs swept the North Dakota. What are they? Hawks. Oh, the Hawks. To you, the Fighting Hawks. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I forgot their name. <laughs> the Bulldogs swept the Just Fighting Hawks. Hermantown, no. <laughs> uh, Friday, 5-3, to three, in front of 63-72 at Amsoil. UMD outshot them. Or, uh, they were outshot 36-26. to 26. Yeah. UMD. Well, that first game, North Dakota should have won it because the last 25 minutes of that game, North Dakota dominated, especially really? that third period. Just dominated. Yeah. Every battle, North Dakota won. It was just crazy, and... I don't know how UMD lasted. <laughs> they got well, Hunter Shepard. He's got a good. He's got some good stats. He's yeah. like I he's think playing some good games. Fourth or fifth in the league. Yeah, he's which isn't too shabby. No. And then Saturday, a five to two win in front of sixty nine oh three. Uh, UMD outshot uh, North Dakota thirty three to twenty. It's not too often the Bulldogs sweep North Dakota. Yeah, lately they have. Yeah. Last eight games against North Dakota, they beat them. Amazing. And that's the same thing with the Gophers. They beat the Gophers the last eight games. Jeez. Well, North Dakota's had our number over the years, so. Well, the nice thing with UMD, <clears throat> their power play picked up this weekend. Okay. Both, both nights they got three power plays. That's great. So, yeah. So. Uh, nice crowds at Amsoil. Uh, we'll do it again this coming right. weekend after the Tuesday game at Minnesota State. St. Cloud State comes to town. Yeah, there'll be good crowds for that yeah. because they got a top team and they're a Minnesota team. So, that, that'll bring a good crowd. Uh, currently in the NCHC, Denver is atop the league, 8-4-2. and two. They got 27 points, uh, followed by St. Cloud State. Uh, Western Michigan, third in the league. Right. North Dakota, fourth. UMD, fifth. UMD, 7-7-0 seven, seven and o in league. Excuse me, in league play, 13-9-3 overall. Uh, good enough for 21 points. Rounding out the NCHC, sixth is Colorado College. Omaha, seventh. And Miami, eighth. Um, Bulldogs got to keep winning, Jerry. Yep. Well, I'm pairwise... We got six teams in the top 13. Jeez. That's amazing. Who are they? Who's number one? Number, okay, here's what we got. Uh, number three in the nation and pairwise is St. Cloud State. Number tied for four is Denver. Number um, eight is UMD. Um, Western Michigan, number nine. North Dakota, number 12. And Omaha, number 13. They had a. Huh? Omaha? Um, yeah, they have. See, they're losing to teams that are ranked high. Okay. So that, that's why they're so high. Now, who's one, two, one, two, and uh, Notre Dame, who's coming into uh, Twin Cities to play the Gophers in the Big Ten matchup this weekend. So that'll be a big matchup. Notre Dame's number one, and Cornell switched with uh, Clarkson this week for number two. Okay. So NCHC well represented. Yeah. <laughs> There's no other league like Yeah, it. that's pretty cool. NCHA, home of the uh, Saints Scholastica Saints. Wow, the Saints beat number one St. Norbert 4-3 to three at Mars Lakeview on Saturday. Uh, what was the uh, stat? CSS, second ever win over a number one ranked team. Uh, the Saints extend an unbeaten streak to 11 games, 10 straight wins, 
And then you have uh, a couple of other notes. First collegiate multi-goal for Parker Mismash, former Edina Hornet. Well, that's one of the best players on North Dakota's team, his brother. Really? Yes. So Parker Mismash here in uh, uh, Duluth playing up at St. Scholastica. Had a multi-goal game over the weekend. Kyle Starr has scored at least one point in his last eight games. And third game in a row with at least one point for David Ross. Uh, we're talking about the College of St. Scholastica. Just out of nowhere, boom, uh, 10 straight wins. Really? Yeah. I better, I better start following them a little better. <laughs> and it's funny. They beat St. Norbert, the number one team in the uh, in the conference, right. uh, on Saturday. But on Friday... They had a tough time with one of the, the, Finla bottom, Finlandia. the bottom team. <laughs> so... You never know. They're kids. It's great. It's a, uh, it's a funny game sometimes. Currently, the standings in the NCHA with that loss, St. Norbert drops to number two. Adrian, number one, 11 1 0 with 22 points. Lake Forest, th third. St. Scholastic is fourth in the NCHA. They have a, uh, a conference record of 7 4 and 1. Overall, they're 13 5 and 1 with 15 points. Uh, the Saints will play at Lawrence. Uh, in Appleton, Wisconsin this weekend, but the Saints playing good hockey. Yeah, good. Good for Mark Wick and uh, his coaching crew. And uh, one of the guys on his coaching crew uh, working with the goalies, Brant Nicklin. Oh, an ex-UMD goalie. Yeah. Yeah, good. Good for that team. And high school hockey, uh, we might as well get the rankings because we haven't done any in a couple weeks, but let's uh, go real fast. Um, number one in double A, class double A, Edina, number one with a 16 1 record. Who's Min that lost to? It's Minnetonka. And then Minnetonka is 14 1 and 2. Who's that lost to? Duluth East. <laughs> St. Thomas Academy, 14 1 and 1. <laughs> and that loss? Boy, who, who did they lose to? I can't think right now. All right. Duluth East, 12 1 and 3. Who's that lost to? Eden Prairie. There you go. Holy Family Catholic, 14 2 and 1, number 5. Creighton Durham Hall, 14 2 and 1. Wow. There's a young team that's really coming around, and they, that's a team to watch out, too. They got some young players. I was talking to Tommy Paul, who used to play on the 1968 Cathedral team. Oh, one sure. of the better players. Yeah. And they opened the wall at Duluth Heritage Center for Duluth Cathedral, so they had a little celebration there last Tuesday. Really? And he was telling me how young this team is and some of the players are really good. Creighton Durham Hall. Yeah, and that's where his kids went to school. And Joe so, Mower. Yeah, there you go. And a lot of others. Quarterbacks in the National Hockey League, Steve Walsh, and uh, a, lot of, a lot of information on all of that school. <laughs> White Bear Lake, number seven. Moorhead, number eight at 13 and six. Centennial, number nine. Those two teams played in the hockey day. Minnesota, so they're right next to each other. No, Centennial won that in overtime. Was it? No, Moorhead. Did. Moorhead did. Okay. Yeah. All right. And Andover, who's in Duluth East section, is thirteen and four. Mm. There's an up, another up and coming. They're keeping their kids, and they got some numbers down there. And um, so that's a team to watch out for too. Now, what is their uh, nickname? The Rovers. No, the Huskies. Not the Andover Rovers? No, nope. Huskies. No. Woof. Okay. <laughs> okay, and over in Class A, I got Montamina, number one. Hermantown, number two. St. Cloud Cathedral, number three. Orono, four. Mounds West Tonka, five. Greenway, six. East Grand Fork, seven. Sartell St. Stephen, eight. Minneapolis, nine. Delano 10. So, a lot of hockey left, one month, and then playoffs start. Who did Hermantown lose to the other night? St. That... Michael Albertville. Yeah, it was a very those... good double A team. Okay. They're, they're, right now, I put them third in class A8. Eight, All right. With Moorhead, Brainerd, number two. Were they in the state tournament last year? No. Who am I thinking of? Moorhead was in that section. No, I'm thinking of. Uh... All right, anyways. Well, you're, you're thinking of Monticello, Monticello in sure. Class A. All right, that played Hermantown. Yeah, how are they doing? They're they're in they're trying to fight in the top ten. Okay, so they're a decent team still. Yeah, so that's good. And I uh, got what other news did we have? Oh, they're trying to 
go to the state high school league, the coaches association, with uh, trying to get um, more games. Right now, it's twenty-five games plus playoffs. Is there high a number? That, do they want to add? How many do they want to add? Well, as many as they can get. <laughs> really? Yeah. Trying so to get what, a couple more weeks so they can get three, four games in. Would they want to start the season earlier then? Well, I don't know. That That's would conflict thing. with Thanksgiving. They got to do stuff. Well, they start out already before Thanksgiving, some teams. Oh, my goodness. What is and going then, on? And plus, they want to go from 17 minutes to 20 minutes. I like it. But the only problem is there's a lot of teams that don't have numbers. Yeah. In 20 minutes and they get some injuries. Might hurt. Extra games. Might hurt. Look at uh, Duluth Denfield. They don't even have a JV team. Keep the time where the time is. The time is, is yeah. okay. Well, they're trying to, keep, they think this will help uh, keep kids here more, too, because when you go to juniors, you're playing 20 minute periods and twice as many games. Yeah. So, I mean, I understand both sides. All right. All right. What else do you have? <laughs> well, we've got uh, a full slate. Of course, the uh, NHL All Star Game is coming up. It'll be played in Tampa, Florida, yeah. on the uh, what is it here? It's going to be the twenty twenty eighth, uh, Sunday, the twenty eighth, down in Tampa, Florida, and uh, the Minnesota Wild have a game Monday. We're taping today, the twenty second. The Wild play. They'll host Ottawa, and then they'll travel to Pittsburgh on Thursday. That's a six o'clock start. And then that'll end the uh, first half, basically, uh, for, during the All-Star break. The uh, Wild come out of the All-Star break with a game at Columbus on Tuesday, January 30th. And then they're back home to take on the vaunted Vancou uh, Vancouver, uh, Vegas Golden Knights there you go. on Friday, September 2nd, 7 o'clock. That's a nationally televised game. Is it? NBC? NBC Sports Network. Okay. And then Saturday, February 3rd, at the Evil... Dallas Stars. No. Well, I got a little news. That since you, you, we didn't do the show last week, uh, in the last couple of weeks, some things that happened. JT Brown, uh, UMD player, he played his hockey down at Rosemont. And he um, got traded to Anaheim. Well, he Ducks. was put on waivers. Yeah, he yeah. picked up by yeah. Anaheim. I'm sorry. And then um, Jake Randolph got the NCHC Player of the Week. He got nice. six points uh, last week. Jake. And, yeah, that weekend. He got three goals and three assists. Awesome. And then Phil Ballou, he's got the winning goal two weeks in a row for Northern Michigan when they won their games. Wow. So some uh, Minnesota kids doing good. Duluth kids. <laughs> How did uh, Coach Sandlin not get Phil Ballou on this roster? That's another know? one. And uh, My goodness. Dean, Dean Blaze dropped him, too, from uh, oh, commitment. Geez. Everyone's talking about that. He's... The coaches at North Mish, that's their best player, and he's a sophomore only. Well, okay. They'll come back to haunt you every time. We've got to go. Uh, we've got uh, just a, a moment here left. Uh, like Jerry said, uh, we had to take last week off, but we're back in the saddle. Check us out on Facebook. Uh, like us there on Facebook. Uh, we're on YouTube. Check out our YouTube channel, of course, MinnesotaHockeyConnection.com. Uh, check out the rankings there and the other uh, stories that Jerry puts up. We want to thank the staff at... Uh, Public Access Television in downtown Duluth. City Hall, where we uh, tape this show. We thank the staff there. And, uh, Jer, I think that's it. Uh, we'll be back uh, next week to drop the puck. Yeah. See you at the rink. <laughs>